Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. In today's video I'm going to cover the basics of managed identities. After watching this video you should have an understanding what are the managed identities and how you can use them in Azure to ease your communication between Azure resources and ease your credential management. I will cover the both managed identity types, the user assigned and the system assigned in this video and show how you can use them in the Azure portal. Okay, let's first cover system assigned managed identity. Let's imagine a situation that we have an application running on virtual machine and then we have a storage account. In that storage account, we have some image files that we would like to retrieve as part of our application logic. Now we have to figure out how we can get those image files. One very traditional way would be using storage account keys. We could get the keys from the storage account and use them as part of our application logic and then we would be able to retrieve those image files. Yes, this technically works, but this is a very bad practice guys. Do not ever store your storage account keys as part of your application code. Instead, what you could do, you could deploy Azure Key Vault and store those keys there and then just have a Key Vault reference in your code and then you would be able to retrieve those files from the storage account without exposing the keys. But there is a way more sophisticated way of doing this so we can get rid of all this key shenanigans here. We can use Azure Active Directory for doing the authentication for us. And how we are going to do this is that we are going to turn on System Assigned Managed Identity for our virtual machine. And what this does, it will create an entity for this virtual machine to Azure AD. Easy way to think about this is that it will create a user for this virtual machine to Azure Active Directory. After we have that identity in the Azure AD, we can just use Azure role-based access control to grant storage blob data reader writes for that identity and then retrieve the files with our virtual machine. Some of you might now think that this is pretty similar to using service principle. Yes, you are correct. But in my opinion, this is more convenient way since there are no expiring secrets that are always troubling with service principles. Also, it is very good to understand that system assigned managed identity is very coupled with the resource, meaning that there could be only one system assigned managed identity per resource. And if the resource is deleted, then the system managed identity will be also deleted from the Azure AD. Now we have covered the basics of system assigned managed identities. And I hope you now have an understanding what are those and how they can be helpful when doing connections between Azure resources that support Azure AD authentication methods. Next, we are going to go to the Azure portal and show how you can enable system assigned managed identity to a virtual machine and how you can give access to that virtual machine to a storage account using that system assigned managed identity. Now we are in the Azure portal where I have already created a resource group for us. We have our virtual machine here and then we have our storage account here. Now we would like to get access to that storage account using our virtual machine. And for this access, we are going to use our virtual machine's system assigned managed identity. Let's go to our virtual machine and under the settings, we can find the identity tab. Let's open that up. And here we can enable system assigned managed identity. Let's do that. Now Azure will register this virtual machine with the Active Directory so that we can use it for authentication. Now let's go back to our resource group and open our storage account. Let's open Access Control and let's add new role assignment. Now we need to find Storage Blob Data Reader role. Let's select that. We would like to assign access to our managed identity, so we will select that. And, and then we have to select members that we would like to add here. Here in the managed identity list, we can find a virtual machine. And here is our virtual machine, so let's grant the access for it. Now we can just move forward and press review and assign. Now Azure will assign the access for our virtual machine. Now the role assignment is done. So we have successfully now added access for our virtual machine to this storage account using system assigned managed identity. Now we have covered system assigned managed identities and showed to you 
how you can use them in the Azure portal. Next, we are going to cover user assigned managed identities. Okay, user assigned managed identity. Let's start with our setup here. In this setup, we have three Azure resources, virtual machine, logic app, and data factory. And then we have a storage account. And all of these three resources would like to access that storage account. If we would like to give access to this storage account by using just one identity, we could consider using user assigned managed identity. We can create a resource called user assigned managed identity that can be found in Azure Marketplace. When we create that resource, it will create corresponding identity to Azure Active Directory. Then we can grant this identity to all of our three resources and then give access using that identity to the storage account. So they will be all able to access the same storage account using the same identity. The most major difference between user assigned managed identity and system assigned managed identity is that user assigned managed identity can be granted to multiple resources and it is decoupled from the resources that it's being granted. Meaning that if we would delete all of these resources that it has been granted, still the user assigned managed identity would stay in Azure AD. So we would have to destroy the actual user managed identity object in our resource group. Now we know what is a user assigned managed identity. So let's go to the Azure portal and see how it works. Now we are back in the Azure portal and I have created data factory to the same resource group that we used in the last demo. What we will do next is go to the marketplace and search for user assigned managed identity resource. And here we have it. So let's create one. Let's name our user assigned managed identity according to our naming convention. Let's click next. No need to add tags next. And then we will create it. Now it is being deployed. Deployment should be done very soon. Now it is done. Now let's go back to our resource group. Let's refresh the resource group that we can see it here. There it is. So now we have successfully created new user assigned managed identity to this resource group. Now we can assign it to our data factory. Let's go to our data factory. Let's open managed identities and then select user assigned and add. Here we can see our user assigned managed identity. Let's add that. And now we have added that user assigned managed identity to our data factory. Now we can go back to our resource group and let's go to our virtual machine. And same thing here, click identity and user assigned. Now the same thing here, let's add and select our newly created user managed identity and add that to our virtual machine. Now it is being added, should be done soon. Now it is done. Now let's go back to our resource group and find our storage account. Now let's go to the access control and add new role assignment. Let's search for storage blob data contributor. Select that and click next. And now we want to add a new managed identity and then select members. Now we can select our user assigned managed identity and add that as member. Now we can go forward and review and assign this identity to this storage account. Cool, now it is done. Now both of these resources have access to that storage account using user assigned managed identity. Now you have seen in the Azure portal how to use the user assigned managed identity and how to grant accesses with it. Now let's compare these identities side by side to highlight the key differences between them. In this side to side comparison, I try to highlight the key differences between these two resources. The first key difference is that the system assigned managed identity is automatically created by Azure. In some resources, you just have to enable it or in some cases it is already enabled by default. What comes to the user assigned managed identity, you have to manually create the resource for it and then you will have to manually assign it to the resources you want to use it for. Second key difference is the scope. System assigned is limited to the resource and the user assigned has a flexible scope. And this is tied to our third key difference, which is that there could be only one system assigned managed identity per resource and there could be multiple user assigned managed identities per resource. 
Ford key difference is that the life cycle of the system managed identity is heavily tied to the resource. So if you delete the resource, the identity is gone also. But with the user assigned, they are decoupled, meaning that if you delete the resource, the user assigned managed identity will still live on. Now you should have an understanding what is a system assigned managed identity, what is a user assigned managed identity, how to use them, and what are the key differences between these two. Also, it is good to keep in mind that not all Azure resources support AD-based authentication. So you can use these identities only with those resources that support it. Also, some of the tech-savvy people there might complain that I left some technical details out like the token retrieval and token verification with AD out from this video, but that was intentional. Because in my opinion, the regular Azure user or developer doesn't need to understand this identity authentication on that details level. This was everything that I wanted to cover today. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any other Azure related topics that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please put some comments to the comment section down below. See you in the next video.